Kovac, he is an absolute daredevil because he's put himself off the road. He's giving everything one gap, two bite lengths, and Mate Mohoric is in danger of going away here. This could be his big day. If you've ever watched Milan San Remo over on GCN Plus, you will know that the race is almost always won on the descent of the Poggio. This descent into the finish is vital and it provides some hair raising descending. He's giving everything, and look at it, every single centimetre of the road being exploited now by Bande Mohoric. Last year, Matty Mohoric dropped his rivals on this descent, riding away to take the win. But he had one canny upgrade, a dropper post. How decisive, though, was the dropper in that victory? We've come here to the Poggio to find out. Two runs on this descent, one with, one without the dropper. How decisive did it prove? One way to find out. Let's do it, man on. Milan San Remo, the opening monument of the season. A race that builds and builds over its 300 kilometer odd length until one final crescendo here on the Poggio. The descent is almost as decisive as the climb itself, with seven major hairpins and 140 meters of altitude loss as you descend down this climb. There really is no room for error. Just look what you're faced with if things go wrong. One drop or a big wall. Yes, and the bottom of the descent leaves only two kilometres left until the finish. So you can see why this scene has been the place where so much drama has happened in the past and lots more still to come. Last year, we saw some of the most impressive descending we have ever seen. Mohoric literally rode everybody off his wheel and even the TV cameras were struggling to keep up with him. Yeah, he's known as a really impressive descender already, but he planned this upgrade using the drop post in Milan San Remo already. And it was a bit of a surprise when he deployed it in the race to his advantage. The theory being by using the dropper seat post is that he could lower his center of gravity and provide himself with more control on this descent, which would translate to more speed. And when you watch the footage of him descending, you actually see that he does push it so far, he nearly crashes on a number of occasions, but He's quoted in the media afterwards as saying that thanks to the dropper, it actually stopped him from crashing. So, I fit a dropper to my Canyon Grizzle. It's got 75 mil of travel, and I've come here to give it a go and see what might happen, how it might feel, and how it will translate to the descent on the Poggio for myself. And I guess there's only one thing for it now, Manon. The question is, have you got um, Horwich's descending skills? Not quite. Okay. So it might not be as impressive. Okay. But we'll It'll give it our best there. We'll still be good. We'll still be good. Let's do it. Right, Connor, your first run with not the dropper seat post. Yep. Do not click that button. I'm not allowed to use it. I'm no. only cheating myself, the GCM fans, my family, my friends. And... We'd be very disappointed if you accidentally used it. So I'm going to be honest. So your first run, as always, be safe. Don't take any risks. It's not a race. We're not actually racing Milan San Remo today. So are you ready? With control, hopefully, comes speed. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, let's get a control marker put down. See what time I can post, okay. Are you ready? Count me in, in three, two, one, go. We're off. Straight into the tight one. Don't want to f first corner. Not as fast as my orange today, but that is the last key bit, and it is full gas now, all the way into San Remo. Here he is. How was that, Connor? First run done. Felt good actually. Yeah. Yeah, enjoyed that. Speedy. 
felt fast. I, I mean, I kept it safe. It's different when you don't have like the whole road yeah. and closed roads, so you, you do have to be obviously really careful and. And you take a completely different line as well. Yeah, it's totally different. Um, totally different descent, really, when you haven't got both uh, both lanes. But I managed it in four minutes twenty-four. Four minutes twenty-four, nice. I feel I'm not sure how the dropper post is going to impact my time. How much pedaling did you actually do? You have to do a good bit of pedaling. There are some flat spots on the descent. We have to get back yeah. up to speed. So, what's your thought with the dropper seat post? Are you going to, you know, when you are pedaling, are you going to bring it back up, or are you just going to leave it down the whole time? Yeah, I'll definitely bring it back up. I mean, that's the point of the dropper is the fact that you can put it down or up whenever you want to. Um, it's just I'm so used to descending and taking hairpins with the saddle up that I just. In my head, I just don't know. I can see where the benefits will lie, but I just don't know if I'm going to be that used to it to well, make the most of them. But let's find out. Only one way to find out, Connor. Let's get you to the start line and okay. set you off. Run two, dropper engaged. <laughs> right, Connor, time for the second run. Engage seat post dropper. Engage the dropper, man. On. That was a little less dramatic than yeah, I thought it would be. Yeah, I thought, thought it would be. Anyway, good. dropper is engaged. Okay. Are we ready for the second run? I'm ready. Down to San Remo and take the victory. We'll see. We'll something, see how it compares. Something yeah. like that, Connor. Keeping it safe once more. Yeah, again, keep it safe. Are you ready? Yeah, count me in. Let's give beep, it a go. Beep, beep, beep! <laughs> Okay, coming into the last bit of the descent. This is where the road gets a little bit bumpy. You go over this bridge and turn left back on yourself towards San Remo. Last little section. Just this bridge is quite technical. Mahoric nearly came unstuck, but he used the dropper to his advantage, got himself out of the gutter and didn't crash. Connor, the, Connor, Connor. The dropper run is done. How was it? Oh, I'm not sure. I think it wasn't as fast, I don't think. Do you not think? And I've just been looking at the times, making some comparisons. So Go on, let us know. Did the first run without the dropper, 4.24. I actually revisited my old times. I did in the race in 4.22, so it's pretty Ooh, comparable close. To, uh, to when I was, uh, I was racing. Oh. With the dropper, 4 minutes 40. What oh, slower? 16 seconds slower. Interesting. That's very interesting. Why do you think that is? I think I just wasn't used to it. It felt so foreign and strange. So when I was going into the hairpins, I was making the most of the dropper, putting it down. I just didn't know how to handle the bike <laughs> suddenly. It felt really weird. Um, I, I overran a couple of hairpins and a couple of bends when, when it was down, just because I wasn't able to balance the bike properly. I was so used to having the saddle where it is yeah. and using that to kind of distribute my weight on the bike. Um, the, when the drop was down, it just was a totally different language. Um, but at times it felt faster. And I think the way Mahoric liked to use this was to get into a kind of super tight position where he stayed legal because you have to keep your, your, your bum on the saddle on the descents. Um, so it was almost like a legal super tuck. Yeah. So on the fast bits, I could really get compact and low and get aerodynamic and probably my, my pace picked up. Do you think if you, you know, had a bit more time on the dropper seat boost, you did a few rides, did a few descents, maybe had it for a month, do you think you'd be faster? I honestly don't think I would. Do you not? I don't know. Would you, would don't. you, would you still now stick to your normal seat post? I don't think... I swap over to a dropper. No, not for you. Soon. It's not for me. Maybe it's for the fact I'm so tall and I'm an anomaly and my weight's <laughs> all over the place. I don't know, but it just, I just can't see how I could have been faster in the hairpins with the dropper, dropper engaged. Um, I just like being able to have my weight on the saddle. I guess if you're so used to it from when you started riding a bike, all these years, that has been your descending position. And then to try something completely different, yeah. It's not going to feel normal, I just is felt it? so low. I felt like I was sitting so... I felt like I was sitting on the back wheel. It it's just it's felt bizarre. It's probably what we feel like. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think I'll be sticking to my normal bike. Um, it was fun to try the dropper out, though. And let us know in the comment section down below if you'd consider a dropper post yeah. on your it'll, road bike. It'll be interesting to see what they do in the race, if we'll have more people on dropper seat posts. But there's only one way to find out. Head over to GDCM Plus to watch the race. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you on the next video.